Um, you know, we all did spend those two weeks at home. I spent a little longer because of my surgery. Um, but I was still in contact uh, with so many teachers and students and parents uh, across my vast district. And we know that children in New Mexico and across this nation face so many unique and heartbreaking challenges. Um, so when we walk through these amazing halls that we get to work in with the responsibility we have to keep all of our constituents safe, I am looking for those solutions to the problems we actually face. Chairwoman Fox, uh, what is the leading cause of death for children under 18 in the United States? Well, I've heard it said here today um, that it is gun violence. Yes, indeed. Gun violence is the greatest cause of death for children under 18. More children die of gun violence than any other cause. And that, that to me, is among the most urgent issues when it comes to making sure our kids are safe and cared for in our schools. Um, indeed, you know, in, since Columbine, 349,000 children have suffered through gun violence in the schools because it's not just the ones who die, it's not just the ones that have been shot and are recovering in a hospital, it's all of those who have to suffer through. If you have not read the stories of the young boy who played he was dead in Uvalde, if you have not heard those stories and recognize that something needs to be done. Chairwoman Fox, I think the one too many, you pointed out that one too many is too much. To me, 349,000 are too many. Uh, there were 46 school shootings last year, and those numbers are only rising. Chairwoman Fox, does this bill do anything to address the scourge of gun violence in our schools? The intent of this bill has nothing to do with gun violence. It's Thank you. It's all about Thank you. treating women fairly. Thank you. I would indeed say that last year, we passed the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. That law helps provide resources to fight the mental health crisis amongst our youth. It was pointed to in several of my visits to the schools because uh, it was going to attack a major issue facing our children. That law is an example of how Democrats and Republicans can work together with President Biden to actually help <coughs> our kids. I really want to thank our, our Chairman Cole for having supported that bipartisan law. Um, Representative Takano, thank you so much, Chairman Takano, um, for, for reading that passage of the governor. The idea that his goal, not understanding, in, in, in some ways maybe similar to Chairwoman Fox, as to what is, the, what is really about with a transgender child. That was so moving, the, the fact that that governor just wanted to make sure that the children in his state stayed alive. Can you talk a little bit more about the impact um, that a law like this and other laws that are targeted, that are using trans children and trans people as targets in order to get people mad, in order to get people to pay money, uh, to, you know, to send in money to political campaigns? Tell us a little bit about what happens to the actual children uh, when they see this kind of attack on who they are? Well, there is, I think, obviously not among all Republicans, because the governor of Idaho is a Republican. The governor of uh, Indiana is a Republican. So not all Republicans are engaging in extreme efforts, extremist efforts to target trans kids, to up in public education. But there has been political success in some parts of our country, uh, where uh, some other governors, uh, notably Governor DeSantis of Florida, uh, has seen a political advantage uh, in uh, using and riding uh, the wave of misunderstanding, uh, of creating more fear among parents. Uh, you know, parents, um, care a lot about their kids. We all know parents care about their kids. Uh, and it's not too hard with a person who sits in a place of leadership to manipulate those fears, uh, to fan those fears, uh, 
uh, to the detriment of a very, very vulnerable population that's not understood. And even my colleague, the chairwoman, claims not to even uh, grant that trans people and trans young people exist. Simply don't exist. Uh, and therefore, it makes it easy for them to write a piece of legislation uh, and have it purport to be about protecting girls and women. Um, this bill does not protect girls and women. It does not increase opportunities for women to compete uh, at the collegiate level or to win more scholarships, for women and girls to have equal playing fields, to have access to facilities and practice fields uh, that are on par with what uh, men have and what boys have, to have the same, uh, par to have parity in the kinds of sports teams, to have a girls and a sports team, uh, gr girls and boys sports team. This bill does nothing uh, to ameliorate the fact that, according to the Women's Sports Foundation, men and boys still have one million more opportunities than girls do. And I haven't seen the chairwoman or any Republican advance such legislation. Why are they, say, why are they saying that this bill uh, achieves that purpose when its, very, when its main purpose is to target uh, a group of people that they don't even say exists? Um, so that's, that's an issue. So sports bans don't just negatively impact transgender and intersex athletes being targeted, but also the mental health of transgender and other LGBTQI youth more broadly. 85% of transgender and non-binary youth say that recent debates around anti-trans bills have negatively impacted their mental health. And uh, Congresswoman, let me just say, I remember being a teenager in California when a state senator named John Briggs uh, qualified for the ballot an initiative known as the Briggs Initiative, which would have banned gay teachers or LGBT teachers from teaching in the schools. That debate affected me as somebody growing up, as someone being a teenager. And so I can completely understand how just this debate about transgender youth and sports, transgender uh, book banning, uh, banning books that even mention them, I mean, this movement, this extremist movement doesn't even want them, want kids to have access to books that tell them, you know, that, 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 that uh, reveal their experience, the experience of who they are. It's not about converting them. It's not about making more trans kids uh, or grooming them. It's about just having kids know uh, that there is somebody who understands their experience. Um, this, just this debate, the kind, of, the kind of divisive debate we're having is affecting the mental health of transgender kids and other LGBTQI youth. Uh, thank you very much. And you know, I've read reports that show that 29% of transgender youth have actually been threatened or injured with a weapon or on school property, compared to you know 7%. Any bullying is wrong, but to see that multifold increase on transgender kids is really scary. Uh, and and this kind of bill just gives more to that, especially if you have some of the in, in, in intrusive uh, needs to verify somebody's gender, right? And that's what you were talking about that we need to be worried about. One of the things that I think is very uh, concerning, I don't know if you did read the recent article that came out in the New York Times of how a campaign against transgender rights mobilized conservatives. And that article, actually they poll tested what would get people the most upset as some of the issues around uh, equality seem to fade? Because now I think there is a general acceptance among many uh, that you, know, you can get married, that you know, we can have uh, LGBTQ marriage equality, right? So that, that, that I think is, did you read that article? I actually did read that article. Um, and uh, one of the things the article uh, one, of the, one of the ideas that it put forward was the idea that America, the American people have generally moved on about gay, lesbian, and bisexual people. Uh, that there's been a greater 
acceptance and that so the so-called culture war over lesbian, gays, and bisexual people has generally been lost by the conservative right. Uh, I would say I know a lot of conservatives uh, who uh, embrace LGBT. I mean, it's, it's not a liberal or conservative thing, but there is an extremist element of our country uh, that is looking to capitalize politically to gain power based on uh, based on uh, America's, uh, I think, less familiarity, the less familiar, fam the less uh, the Americans' uh, relatively less familiarization uh, of of trans people. I think over time, people Americans are going to come to understand transgenderism, uh, and there and there, uh, people who ha have put forward bills like this uh, either will be ashamed, or history will look very unkindly. Uh, on this very ugly episode in our history. Right, same as LGBTQ. These are children who are children. There, there are children, there are, are cousins, there are brothers, they are part of who we are. They, we cannot deny them uh, as they are. We cannot deny their existence and their ability to be able to play sports, to be able to, I mean, I read one of the articles uh, of, uh, in fact, I think I was uh, involved in, this, in, in, in uh, the Supreme Court case, in the case where it's like, that child was actually very bad at sports, but it was somewhere where she was able to participate with her friends and participate in those school activities. Chairman Cole, I seek unanimous consent to enter into the record the April 16, 2023, New York Times article, How a Campaign Against Transgender Rights Mobilized Conservatives. Without objection. And, and I think the other point that you were making, um, uh, Representative Takano, was with regards to who is mad about this? And uh, that I have looked at the writings and the statements of uh, women's organizations, women in sports organizations. There is a long list of women who are in sports who oppose this law. Uh, Chairman Cole, I would like to with, seek unanimous consent to enter into the record. Statement of women's rights and gender justice organizations in support of full and equal access to participation in athletics for transgender people. Without objection. So uh, can you speak a little bit more on where the position is of women in sports uh, on this issue? Well, there are notable sports figures uh, who have taken, uh, you know, I think a position of uh, fear uh, and there are a great many more uh, women, uh, accomplished sports figures, uh, who are very supportive of transgender uh, women and girls participating in sports. It should be pointed out at the elite level, uh, at, the, uh, in, at the Olympic level and intercollegiate sports level, uh, transgender women, uh, women have been welcomed into uh, competition. Um, this bill, the proponents of this bill, are seeking to use uh, one, uh, one very notable instance um, of controversy to ban participation of all trans students across the country. Um, they've, and, and the ironic thing, the, that the moral panic, the panic of unfairness that's been created by that one uh, instance at the intercollegiate level in swimming, um, this bill would do nothing to address. Um, they're using, this bill would use the federal leverage of denial of funding to insist that schools ban all transgender students from participating. That is, that is, that is the egregious thing of this bill. Thank you, and uh, Chairwoman Fox, uh, thank you very much uh, for your support of Title IX. I, I think, I, I kind of missed Title IX. It didn't make it to uh, my little town in northern New Mexico. Um, you know, they took a while to get on, so I, I, I didn't, you know, it wasn't until I could play softball here with the Congressional Women's Softball Club that I was able to pick up a bat and catch a ball. But, you know, we heard about the, the fact that there are such inequities. Uh, uh, Representative Takano went through them. Uh, does this bill actually address any of those inequities, like resource facility, equipment inequities, budget cuts, any of those? Does this bill do anything about that? So as I mentioned earlier, Title IX has been in existence for 50 years as of last mm -hmm. year. And so uh, my belief is that where there were dramatic inequities, 
that those have been taken care of. Otherwise, people would have been filing lawsuits under Title IX and seeking redress. I just want to say this bill doesn't deny anyone an opportunity to participate in sports. In fact, it protects the equal opportunity of girls and women to participate in athletics. So this supports Title IX. Thank you. Thank you, Madam this Chairwoman. This supports Title IX. Thank you, Madam Chair. And so I think there is still, uh, and, and, and part of the, what has been entered into the record talks about the inequities. So Title IX isn't quite perfect yet. And yes, there have been efforts to increase it. Um, uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gentleman from Kentucky is recognized for questions. Thank you.